Welcome to Psychic Evolution with evidential psychic medium, Jamie Clark, and spiritual coach and healer, Maggie Clark. And welcome back to another episode of Psychic Evolution. I'm Jamie Clark. And I'm Maggie Clark, and this is the podcast where you discover the psychic potential within to empower yourself and manifest your psychic and mediumship gifts. And these abilities are so natural, they're supernatural. And today we want to talk about ascension. We've had so many people ask, what does this word mean? What are they talking about when people use the word ascension? What does that mean? Why is it relevant in the spiritual community right now? Why is it relevant to my psychic evolution? And so this is what we want to address in this podcast episode. Let's pick apart the word ascension. What does it mean? What does it mean in a spiritual aspect, but also what does it mean consciously? What are people referring to when they're using this word? It's important to understand because right now people are using a lot of different vocabulary to explain some of the same things that we talk about on the podcast. We don't necessarily use this word ascension very often, but we do use the word expanding consciousness all the time. And we feel that this is the same thing. So we're going to pick this apart today and hopefully give you some understanding around it and talk about some of the things that are talked about with ascension. Just as an aspect of the ascension, uh, to me, the ascension is is gaining a different perspective. I kind of equate it like each one of us are a droplet in the ocean of consciousness. The more that you ascend, the more expanded your awareness is of what you can see from that different vantage point. And to me, that's why I always say you never fool the universe. If you're here, you're vibing with that energy. And when we can start to expand, when we can start to ascend in our own way, consciously and sometimes unconsciously, that we'll start to get some of the benefits of oneness. We'll start to see that I'm growing always and I'm ascending with my perspectives into the spiritual essence of who we already are, which is perfect, the universe. So we have been going through a massive shift of consciousness in humanity. In in astrology terms, we call this the age of Aquarius. We're shifting from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. And what happens in that shift on on an astrological level is every 2000 years or so, we go through a shift where there is a, a rain where one sign, one zodiac sign takes over and this influences the consciousness of humanity. It permeates all of what humans feel on this earth, and it changes vibrations of experience. So if you wanted to be born in the last 2000 years to experience things like patriarchy and uh, rulerships and dictatorships and control of the masses in the hands of the few, welcome to the Piscean age. You know that, (laughs) I know I make a joke of it, but that that's really... Those types of experiences you can't find everywhere in the universe. The earth is very, very significant that you can actually come here and have an experience like that in this type of energetic dynamic. So when this energy shifts and the age of Aquarius is now pulling in Aquarian energy to the forefront, which is the we, us, the global family, more of a unification of consciousness for all of humanity instead of individualized and sectionalized and separated, you know, we're pulling it all together and say, how does this come together? The Aquarian age also rules electronics and inventions and look at technology expanding. Look at what, what's happened in the last 50 years. Wowzer. So when we're looking at the expansion of consciousness on an astrological level, this cusp period is between the two ages of humanity, Piscean and Aquarian. In that cusp period, we are shifting, we are changing. The old paradigm, the old energy of the old age is dying. It's finishing. It's completing its cycle. And the new age is being born at the same time. So we have this shift that's happening. And with it, we are expanding consciously to a different vibration across the board. All of humanity is doing this or feeling the presence of this energy, whether they're acting on it or shifting consciously yet. This is up to individuals right now, but there is a sweep 
of consciousness. And Jamie, you refer to the tipping point of consciousness. Which I feel that we're there now as a planet. That's why, you know, I'm not a doctor, not a scientist, and nothing like that. But I share the fact that in the beginning, it needed to be encompassing the entire world. In the beginning, it was not a country against a country. It's a virus against the world. Neutralize, break them down, separate them, and then see what happens. And I think... And I feel that within that separation, it also allowed us to start finding ourselves again with a little bit less distraction of the day-to-day living because a lot of people got sequestered into their home. You go and stick around and not go out too much. Let me ask you, do you feel like the, the COVID experience for humanity assisted with the tipping point of consciousness? Yes, because people came to a certain level of disempowerment. And little by little, each one of us started to find ourselves within life and bringing life back into this world from surviving and existing to beginning to live. And when we can start to ascend, expand our perspective, our awareness, it will sometimes give us a different vantage point to see things from. And sometimes from that different way of seeing things, we get a different information, a different vantage point. And when you refer to the tipping point, what does that do for humanity as a whole? What does it do for consciousness? Basically, people are on the same page enough to where it is that shift, and it will just naturally happen. It's the ascension of our awareness that we've been expanding the whole time for all of these years. And in doing that, it's not the expansion where you lose yourself to life in the universe. You find yourself within it. And the more that we're on that inner space astronaut journey, the more that we start to realize, okay, I just needed to shift my thought pattern. And sometimes I can get myself to see and feel things differently just by acknowledging how I'm perceiving it. Because there's as many worlds as there are perceivers. Nobody sees it the same, yet each just as real and just as valid. So basically, it gave us our own individualized energy of coming back together. Because people were so separated, they're like, man, I want to get back in to do something, at least run around, which was their way of wanting to reconnect with humanity in whatever way, very light or not at all, or sometimes big time. But in that, it's also given people a drive, a soul drive, to want to unify and make this a better place. Because when the entire world is affected, that tipping point can also be an empowering point of opportunity. Because we're now starting to take our power back. We're now starting to see things possibly a little bit differently and, and maybe more expandedly instead of the very focused point of view that we're aware of. Sometimes that gives you a little bit more versatility, that ascension, expanded awareness. It's pretty cool that we had to go into our little homes and into our caves and into our hermit shells and discover who we were to realize that we all have this desire to be connected and interconnected with consciousness of humanity. And we are. We are all connected and interconnected, whether you're aware of it or not. You know, that's why I share the fact just for myself, whenever I unify with the oneness, there is no separation with anything at all. It is truly all interconnected. That kind of love and complete acceptance for me just being me, good, bad, happy, sad, all of the eternal life experiences that I've ever been through and experienced is completely loved and accepted. And as I share the fact that when I expand into the oneness and then come back into this physical body, the words that come with it are, who are you now? And I started to realize that as a growth seeking beings, because we are always growing, we are always changing. But the more that we can start to give ourselves something to attain, something to work towards, it at least gives us a lock in point just for the next step. Because once we have achieved that step, we got more. Half the fun's the journey getting there. And it's not always the easiest and simple way. But as you're having enough guts, enough dedication to your own life as well, that it will start to bring you back to life in whatever way you're good with. A little bit here and there, a lot. It's what balances you. It's very fascinating. This word ascension at one point was probably called the golden age of humanity. So in the early 1900s, when we had these amazing philosophers and spiritual movements, they were using the golden age get, you know, being prepared for the golden age and getting ready for the golden age of humanity. And the last hundred years 
has been a preparation for this point of time. They just called it the golden age. Now we call it the ascension or the expansion of consciousness. Some people are even referring to this as the second earth coming, which has a lot of different variations depending on how you perceive what that feels like. But what is definitely agreed upon in the spiritual community is we are expanding so much right now consciously it's, we are no longer sitting on the fence and waiting to see what direction we're going to go. We're either going to get swept under the old age or move into the new age. There's no more sitting on the fence and waiting to decide what vibration you want to be at. Because this ascension is here to elevate the consciousness of humanity so that we can come together as a global family, as a unified human race, a species. And then after that, we get to jo go join the galactic family. They're just waiting for us to get our shiitake mushrooms together. This is what's happening right now. So it's been referred to as a lot of different things. What if the ascension, basically getting a different perspective, a more expanded view, has allowed us to work with the technology potential that has always been there? It just took the ascension of our consciousness to tap into it. And now, because many years ago, uh, those who remember the 800-foot cord with the phone going, yeah, it's got to be here. Um, in the early 1900s, there was a gentleman named Nikola Tesla. He was a scientist. And he was sharing the fact in the very early 1900s that there will be a mechanism that brings the world together. And irregardless of the distance, they will be right in front of you. Not only that, had you said that back then, also they may not have understood it. And they could become fearful of what they don't understand because this technology has always been there. It's the ability to tap in and build from there because now that expanded awareness, that ascension of consciousness is giving us a scientific community to pick all these things apart and possibly gain more insight in a very practical way. And that ascension going beyond the human limitations of awareness allow us to kind of open up a little bit more to the potential of what's always there with a little less fear and more openness of empowerment. Because when we've been able to ascend our perspective, our conscious awareness of the technology and all of that, it's also starting to bring us into the technology and the spirituality, becoming spiritual physics, unification, not separation. And in addition, what if that open receptivity that our, we're expanding, our energy is ascending our consciousness, but also through the technology, it's allowing us to expand even more beyond that. This connection, and again, just from my awareness, but teleportation, time travel, that stuff is very real. Again, we're only, yeah, sure, until you experience it. And it's only science fiction till it's science fact. And it's that kind of a connection that it's the evolution of our consciousness. And what I mean by that is, on average, the brothers and sisters, extraterrestrials, kind of leave us alone to find ourselves. Because if they came in too quickly and shifted that energy of consciousness, some people might freak out. They don't feel so comfortable. Now, the word ascension's also been used um, with the words of of Jesus, right? When we ascend to heaven, so to speak. Now, I I don't believe in heaven and hell. That's not my belief system. I do believe in heaven as a state of consciousness, though, an expanded awareness of your soul self, you know, expanded spiritual energy. But whether you believe in heaven or hell or not makes no difference. When Jesus is ascending into heaven, when his people are ascending, so to speak, it's ascending to another level of consciousness from the way that I see ascension. And with the ascension, with JC Jesus, into heaven, my thing is kind of like you, Mag, is it's a state of consciousness. Because if you go, oh, where's, where's heaven? Where is it? kind of thing. And so notice just on my awareness, on average, that negative energy is connected to below the ground on this planet. And the ascension is expanding beyond the planet. What if that's a little bit of symbology to go, don't trap yourself in the limitations, expand yourself with more of a conscious awareness to help humanity. And first, being able to help yourself. I've learned no longer is it narcissism, but self-realization. I cannot give what I do not have.
I love that visual of expanded consciousness into the galaxies. Like, oh, there it goes. Like, wow. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love. And, and then, of course, we have the, the phrase ascended masters. And some of these ascended masters, you know, didn't believe in heaven either. You know, we have Buddha. We have Green Terra. We have Mary Magdalene. I mean, these are all considered ascended masters because they've attained a level of consciousness where they see a bigger picture. And that's what we mean by ascension. You're elevating, expanding consciousness. You're seeing a bigger picture of how things are connected, how things are one with the universe. And heaven is nothing more than feeling the oneness, feeling the love, feeling the connection, feeling that spiritual energy all the time. And bringing heaven to earth, so to speak, is bringing ascended energy, ascended consciousness into your everyday life, into your body, into your mind, into your heart, into your soul, so that you feel that you can rise above earthly cares, earthly woes, earthly matters, find a spiritual perspective, find a spiritual truth, find an expansion into that spiritual energy so that you can navigate what happens here on this planet in a way that's really comfortable when we see a bigger picture, but more importantly, when we feel into that bigger picture, we're feeling into, oh, wow, I'm here for more than just to like, have a job and work and pay a bill and walk my dog and, you know, raise my family. And I'm, I'm, there's a little bit more to this, you know, that is part of the earthly experience, but what can we bring to this earthly experience from that expanded consciousness is the awareness of ourselves as an eternal being. When we can extend and expand into that level of consciousness where we are eternal, we're bringing that eternal energy into our everyday life. We're blending the worlds of spiritual and physical. We're working with the law of correspondence as above, so below. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. These have been said time and time again. These are universal truths, universal laws. So ascension is allowing us to expand consciousness into the eternal nature, into the oneness, into the connection of who we are and living that truth now in our lives. And it's, this is not always an easy process when we have bills to pay and we have responsibilities to take care of, but bringing that level of connection to the divine, to the oneness, to the all that is of who you are as an eternal soul print of consciousness, and then doing your best with what you have in front of you right here, right now on this planet. This is what Ascension is all about. And it doesn't matter what you have on this planet. That is irrelevant. This is a state of consciousness that you're bringing into your everyday life. In addition, I I just make the awareness that notice these ascended masters are still connected to planet Earth in a way. Because if those beings, those people, along with St. Germain and many other ascended masters, but if they didn't come here and allow us to see the spiritual information that you can apply in a physical way, we wouldn't be able to understand it. It's like, how the freak are we supposed to put that stuff in if I have no reference at all? Because uh, that gentleman, JC, used to go, ah, you know what, what I do, you can do, and not only that, you can do more if you'll accept it. And that kind of an empowerment is he was already the Christ consciousness. It's that kind of an expanded awareness that he knew being here wasn't so easy because we're kind of in our infancy of awakening to our own spirituality that we needed a reference. We needed to know that those words can be implemented in some way with our reality. Because, again, if it was just a bunch of information with no one to kind of parlay it or work with it, we would just be having all this information and be frustrated on average that things aren't changing because it's just information. You could have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't use it, you know, whatever. But it's that type of a connection that the ascension, this tipping point of consciousness, is unifying the planet. We're now, to a certain extent, getting on the same page. We're all wanting to kind of get back into life. And heaven has always been there as we perceive it. It's how you're going to present it and what are you going to focus on. And Christ consciousness is 
an awareness, a level of consciousness that he was able to embody while he was here. He was able to share this with humanity. So when we speak of Christ consciousness, you can feel the ascension or the expansion of consciousness through Christ consciousness, but you can also experience that through Buddha consciousness, through St. Germain consciousness, through St. Francis of Assisi consciousness, it, and the list goes on and on. All of these people came here and had an earthly experience to show us what was possible. That's what makes them ascended masters. They lived here, they did the grunt work, they had a human experience, and they rose into a certain level of awareness. This is ascension. So what humanity is talking about with the ascension is to rise up consciously, to expand your horizons, to expand your view. Now, there are many ways to achieve ascension. You do this physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually anytime you're breathing. But there are some practices that you can take on to help with that as ascension. And part of that is one of the reasons we love to work with the higher self. The higher self is the part of you that's already ascended. It's already connected to the all that is, to your everlasting soul print of consciousness. It's already one with everything. So forming this relationship to the higher self helps you feel connected. It is the bridge of this ascension of consciousness. It's a dimensional bridge that each and every one of us has. So we want to tap into the part of ourselves that feels connected to what we consider higher, quote unquote, higher levels of being, whether it's unconditional love, whether it's awareness, whether it's spiritual truths that we can live in our daily life. You know, the list goes on and on and on how we can apply ascension and work towards an ascended level of awareness. And a number of the Ascended Masters came in in different ways, each with their own experience and expertise. And St. Germain was great at tuning things into gold and, and many other aspects. But it's also... Alchemy, the, right? Yes, exactly. He was the alchemist. Yes. And it's that connection that that spirituality is giving us the knowledge to be able to do the practicality of spirituality. Because again, with this... Ascended Master perspective, notice in this case, St. Germain and J.C., Jesus, came here again to help us in any way they can. But not only that, the approach of ourselves to heaven or the universe, meaning some, like Buddha, meditate. Others would do their magic and work with transmutation purification. Others were walking on water and doing the healing beautifully. Each an ascended master with an expanded conscious awareness, but able to, a little bit at a time, bring that into humanity. Sometimes we need a little bit at a time because if things shift too quickly, we're a little freaked out, man. Like, am I missing something? What the? So when we can build up to the tipping point, which is where we're at now for me, that people are more open. It is actually bringing the world together, not just separating it. Another thing we get questions about is ascension symptoms. And this is something that when I first heard this, I was like, what? What are they talking about? Like, this isn't this just normal? Like, because I have experienced so many shifts of consciousness as I've gone through my spiritual journey, and some of them come with symptoms. For a period of my life, I kept getting headaches over and over. I called them third eye headaches. They were in the center of my forehead. I was like, oh, third eye headache happening here. But it was an expansion of this energy center of my, my perception of my sometimes my third eye, whatever that was looked like, how I viewed things, how I could see, perceptually see and feel. And so sometimes I would go through these things where I get headaches and headaches and headaches. And I was like, oh, and you know, my mentor just said, oh, you're having an expansion headache. That's what we would call them. We didn't call them ascension symptoms. We were like expansion headache, you know, after a certain point in time, when I was at a certain level of conscious awareness, they just stopped completely because I didn't need to, to experience that anymore. My energy and my, my level of consciousness expanded into that comfort zone. And so these ascension quote unquote symptoms can take any form. They could be headaches. They could be itchy skin. They could be all kinds of things. You know, there's lists of them. And when you look at them on the, on the internet, so I'll, I just kind of 
steer away from, um, you know, Dr. Google with ascension symptoms and just realize that our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our emotions have to process expansion of consciousness. We can't go from a base level of, of earthly consciousness to ascended mastership with just one leap. Okay. Sometimes I believe that might be possible. Okay. But most of the time we have to gain a little bit more of an expansion and then we rise to, we go to another level and it's not really like a level. It's just another perceptual field of understanding and integration. So when we have these quote unquote ascension symptoms, all we are doing is we are exploring the, the growth edges of our being. So think about that. If I have a growth edge in my third eye chakra, then if it's pushing a little bit on that growth edge to expand, maybe that causes a physical symptom of a headache. Okay. Now, can I support that? Absolutely. I can embrace this ascension. I can embrace this expansion. I can move into this experience saying I'm ready to receive that level of conscious awareness. So this is how I have worked with all of my quote unquote symptoms, which I never really called it a symptom. I'm just like, this is just part of, of growing up. This is just part of expanding. This is part of, of human life. You know, having a body, getting it, your body in and of itself tuned into those energetic levels is a real thing. Your body has to contain levels of consciousness and energy. And it, it sounds like that when you were having that ascension and the dynamics from it, that a lot of times it was in a focused point. Mm -hmm. So you knew, Pep, ah, okay, more than likely there's connections to that third eye activation. And the good thing is, is you don't have to go anywhere to be activated. It's right here, right now. And what do you want to do with that activated, expanded awareness? Because it's that type that the universe always wants us to be as comfortable as possible. It's kind of nice we can do the best we can and go, all right, let's do this. We're ready for it. And you know what? I'm open to learn more. Because for me, I found that the more I know, the more I know, I don't know nothing, man. But it's that expansion of awareness that you don't have to go anywhere. It is all within you. All we're doing is bringing it to the surface of consciousness to let others know that it's possible. Because J.C. Jesus would go, and, and for me, many years, I used to think it's Mr. Christ, Jesus Christ, and it's actually Jesus the Christ, which is the Christ consciousness. And for some reason, for me, when I see Jesus, he's got a golden energy. I'm like, uh, there's a lot of colors, but for some reason, for me, it's a golden energy. And they'll put the telltale signs of what you're used to connecting with that being or ascended master so that when it happens, up, oh, that's Jesus, or up, oh, that's ascended master, uh, whoever, Elmira, <laughs> many others. But it's that connection to go, look, all of these ascended masters are allowed to be because it's expanding and unifying the consciousness of this planet. The thing about it is this is an inner journey, but then we can share with other people and we will attract people on certain vibrations of, of exploration of their consciousness, where we connect, where we go like, whoa, that's it. We have these great opening conversations. We have these great expansions of information when we share perspectives. And so you might have the most amazing, amazing ascension experience, but I'm going to encourage you to share it with someone, find out what other people's ascension experiences are, see how they connect, see how they're expanding right now. Because because everyone across the globe has the ability to tap into these levels of consciousness. I do feel like the Aquarian Age is opening up so many um, puzzle pieces for people to, to go from, from this place to this place to this place. And again, this we're not talking levels of leveling up, of getting better. Okay. This is not the level of ascension that we're talking about. It's not like going up to the next level of a staircase, ascending one level to another level to another level. That is not what we're talking about because when you expand, you expand in 360 degrees, degrees of connection into who you are. And there's no level for that. 
you know, this is just an awareness that you, you almost like you wake up to, or you experience, or you embody, or you have a taste of. And so be patient with yourself. If you're like, well, when am I going to get to the, the level of consciousness where I am, you know, prophetic or where I am, you know, and I'm enlightened and it takes as long as it takes. We have to remember that going forward. It takes as long as it takes. And this is not a competition. This is not a race to the end. And this is not a leveling up. This is an awareness, an expansion, and you can consciously participate in this expansion. You can consciously invite this into your field of energy by saying, all right, higher self, I'm ready to open and expand more consciously. Be my guide. Show me where my growth edges are. Show me where I'm expanding into my life essence. And when you ask that question and you are in relationship, of course, I always put my caveat in there always in love for the best of all concerned. There's some things I probably don't need to know because if I knew them, I might change the course of my life, right? So I always put in love for the best of all concerned. Show me my growth edges. Show me where I'm expanding consciously. Show me how I'm ascending. And then be open for what you feel. I, when you ask this question, I want you to visually be open. Put all your metaphysical senses on high, high gear. Okay, do this in your spiritual room. And then just be really open. And then check in with your body. Where are you feeling like you could grow in your body? Is there a tightness somewhere? Explore that. Is there an expanded energy that you're feeling? Allow that move into your body. Okay. So this is a body, mind, spirit, soul connection that you can embrace within yourself, but just be open to the information that comes to you. And for most importantly, what you feel, you know, you bring up an interesting point and that is our higher self. Hey, we're looking for guidance because apparently you've already attained it. Uh Oh, so what if the potential is, is we're already there, but it takes the level of consciousness that our higher selves, who's already attained everything in that way of experience, is able to shed some light, insight, and empowerment into our lives, if we'll even listen. And that's the beautiful aspect, is they're always there for us, but they don't try to make us have to make the connection, is, hey, we're here, and if you're ever ready, whenever you want to, bip, we'll just drop right in. But we want you to have the empowerment of openness, because if we come in and start sharing, sometimes you'll feel like you're being made to do a change, not allowed to interact with a whole new vibe of reality. Now, for that connection, for my awareness... There's, as I share a lot with Dr. Masuro Emoto, who was a scientist who did hidden messages in water. And that scientist, he found that thought affects the molecular structure of water. If you're doing psychic or mediumship, you are picking up on other thought conscious vibes. What if the more that I do this, the more expanded my awareness becomes? Not better or worse, just maybe different. And sometimes from that different perspective, one, I've been allowed in my own essence to grow into it in my own way at my own rate. And again, I do connect with Chi, my master guide, who is and has already attained that perfection. Now, for me, Chi is very insightful. And just a little while ago, he shared the fact that you know, some people perceive as you're here in this physical and you're only experiencing one circumstance, one choice at a time. And she let me know that on a quantum level, that all potentials are happening now. You wouldn't have all of the potentials happening now if you weren't connected to them. So we start to realize we're individualized, never individual of our spirituality. And that just pulls you right back into self-exploration. This is not something outside of yourself. This is something you explore within because it's already there. All you're doing is tuning into the channel, tuning into the vibration, tuning into the consciousness that allows you to explore all of you right here, right now. It's pretty amazing. 
and for myself, as I share, when I unify with the oneness, my soul is full. It's like the best mood you've ever been in, the best meal you have ever had effortlessly is within me. But it's also that energy that allows me to feel that level of unification, that it's all one, so that I'm more effective at finding myself within life, not losing myself to it. And when we can learn to help ourselves in any way, first... Otherwise, how can we help others if we can't even help ourselves? You're just throwing your crap on other people. I'm like, yeah, my head hurts. Like, oh, bummer. So just for me, it's the ability to, one, be comfortable with how you're growing the best that you can. Two, give yourself permission to do the best you can with your spiritual and psychic evolution. Because sometimes it takes a while. Other times uh, you're initiated from a very young age because you might need that long time to work with it, like me, <laughs> who very thankfully had a whole family that was comfortable with using their abilities. And it allowed me to gain more wisdom and expanded awareness and in a way uh, the ascension aspect. Because it can be a little unnerving if you don't know what you can expect. It's like, well, I can't expect, uh, what? Huh? And so, you know, again, it's your own level that if you can do just a little bit of an awareness, good, whatever works for you. I always say the universe, God, he, she is that who will make you do nothing and allow you to do everything. It becomes that unification to go. It doesn't matter what life you're living. You're going to end up in heaven as we call it. Because just for me, and I share a lot that we connect, it's like each one of us are standing on a ball. And as we're standing on the top of this ball, this is our connection to the big guy as we perceive it. It does not matter what way you take, because the further away you're going, the closer you're really getting. And it doesn't matter what way you take. In the end, you know who you're going to find? You. You are the universe. The universe is you. And finding those tools and techniques, whatever it is, meditation, walking around and energizing with the animals and nature, whatever works for you, giving yourself, for me, I want to arrive in comfort, not freaked outness. And so it's allowed me to have my entire life be able to be dedicated to working with my spiritual gifts that we all have. Again, it's do you want to use that ability and what level do you want to take it to? Because more and more people are starting to realize that you control your abilities and your abilities do not control you. I, I share the fact that there are a lot of people who start waking up to their abilities and they'll start picking up on the negative energy more so than the positive because the negative is a little like this and the positive is very straight. But they'll go... If that's all I'm going to see is the negative, then I don't want to do this stuff. Blomp, blomp, blomp. They turn the volume down. You never turn it off because if you've got a soul, you're a sagging medium. But it also allows us to find ourselves within life and at what level, how long are we good and comfortable to be at that level before we can extend and expand into or ascend into the next level of awareness. Because it's all about comfort and love. If you were forced to make a change, there would be such an insecurity to go, well, I can't control anything. Oh, well, whatever is supposed to happen. And it's good to relax into life and be open, but that you realize you do have some control over some of these experiences. So if you feel like you're having, quote unquote, too many ascension symptoms, then you can put some parameters around that with your spiritual team. So remember that you do not have to be victim to expanding consciousness. You can actually make this work really well for you. When I knew that I was having expansion headache, did I ask for that expansion to stop? No, I just, I, I sucked it up. I dealt with the headache because I knew what it was and I was okay with that. But if there were times that I was like, oh, I'm not ready for that. And so I would put the brakes on, you know, so you have, you do have control over what, how you're going to experience life. Just know that your higher self right now is working with everybody on this planet to help them expand consciously, because this is a shift that's happening for humanity as a whole. Chi and, and my, some of my other guides are very much aware of what my comfort level is. So Chi knows how much to impart in a particular circumstance so that I get the flavor, but I'm not consumed by it. That 
energy of a different perspective or of an ascension of awareness gives me more understanding so that as I ascend even more into my new awareness of the knowledge that's always been there, I'm able to be comfortable, empowering, and informative the best that I can. So if you're interested in our practices of what we've done to expand consciously, these are all in our mystery school, all the basic things that we have applied for years and years and years is all in our mystery school. It's $25 a month. You can find it. We'll have a link in the show notes. It's, you know, the basics of what we do to help expand consciousness and what we've applied to time and time and time again, that has helped us integrate the ascension that's happening on this planet. So have fun with your psychic evolution and let us know if you have any questions about your ascension process. And it's truly all about the love. Ascend see and feel life a little bit differently from another perspective. And when we can start to expand, ascend our own awareness into the oneness that's always been there, it just takes how long for us to recognize that we are all one, that we're all within the ocean of consciousness. Are you looking to form a deeper and richer connection to your higher self? Make that dimensional bridge of consciousness a reality in your life. Join us with Infinite Healing from the Stars, that's Vivian Chavette and Peter Benson, and the Psychic Evolution team gathering together in a beautiful spiritual center in Sedona, Arizona, with these beautiful vortex energies and red rocks. And here we're going to learn quantum ways to communicate to your higher self. Discover your soul's purpose activate your third eye, clear your channels, and enjoy messages from Jamie Clark and astrology to help activate your higher self in psychic connections. It is going to be out of this world when you're experiencing beyond quantum healing with Vivian Chavette. We look forward to seeing you in Sedona on January 20th through 23rd of 2023. Visit psychicevolution.net to get your tickets. We look forward to seeing you there and having fun with our psychic evolution.